Hey, how you doing, Justin? Back with you today. I want to talk a little bit about pick manipulation. Now, when you first start on guitar, I recommend that you use a thinner pick because they're very forgiving. You can hold onto them quite tightly and you can play away and, and it's forgiving. It's nice, it's fairly easy. As soon as you start getting a bit better and you start doing things like playing scales or picking out notes individually, you probably want to start using a thicker pick. Particularly if you're moving a song like, say, Wish You Were Here, where you're moving between strumming and picking out notes individually, a really super thin pick is going to be a bit cumbersome and you're going to struggle to pick out the notes. So you kind of need to move to a thicker pick. As soon as you move to a thicker pick, you're going to notice something weird happens, and that is that it's harder to hold on to the pick and it keeps moving around within your fingers of falling out and falling on the floor, falling into the guitar if you're really unlucky. Um, and you're going to find yourself wanting to manipulate the pick. And that's fine, and that happens, and this is what this lesson's all about. Now, because a thicker pick makes better contact with the string, stronger contact with the string, it's much more likely to kind of get moved. So you might find that it's kind of poking out nicely here, and then you go to strum, and then it suddenly all just got pushed in. Well, what do you do when that happens? How do you deal with the fact that the, the pick is suddenly pushed in and you can't kind of play with it? You're going to have to move it. Now, using another finger to move the pick is fine. So it would usually be your driving finger that gets involved. If the pick's gone wrong, you can use it to flick it back into the right place or manipulate it. You can find that you should be able to use that driving finger combined with your first finger to move the pick around. So I'm just like experimenting moving the pick all of the way around. There's the tip at the top. There's the other side at the top and there's the, the tip at the top. So I'm just getting used to fiddling with the pick. Now, I have a pick in my hand a lot, particularly when I was younger. It was like a, a fidget toy the kids have now where I just had a pick in my hand. and I was always just kind of manipulating it, getting used to holding it between my fingers and then hiding it away so I could do some finger styly stuff. Just experimenting with how I was holding the pick and having it in my hand a lot really helped. But what you're going to find, particularly when you're strumming, if it goes wrong, how are you going to fix it? Well, you're going to have to find a way to fix it while you're still playing. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm manipulating the pick to play while I'm still strumming. I've gone all of the way around to do a complete lap. So I'm starting with it at the point. Now I'm letting the press, I'm lightly holding the pick and letting the pressure of the string move the pick around. So now the, the pick is pointing, the, you know, the sharp end is pointing away from me. I'm now continuing to move it around. I'm still just using my thumb and my first finger at this point. Now the pick is kind of pointing back toward the bridge. And then still just using my first, my thumb and my first finger. I'm not using any other fingers. The pick is back to where it wants to be. Now, I've been playing guitar for a long time. Nitsudge definitely cannot do that. Okay, so he really struggles when it's gone and he finds using the, you know, I find when I'm playing left-handed, sorry, I'm never sure whether it, it's just weird to refer to Nitsudge as a different person. It's, yeah, a little bit strange. Anyway, um, he finds that using that driving finger, the middle finger, to manipulate the pick is the right way to do it. But you can definitely learn to manipulate the pick while you play. Okay, so it isn't something that you should stop to do. You shouldn't be playing a song and then stop and go, I'll get my pick in the right place again and start again. You need to find a way to manipulate the pick while you play. You might find sometimes that you do have to have a little break, like a, a beat break. So strum, strum, oh, it's gone wrong. Now, there we go, and it's back. So you have to learn to just do it real quick and then get back into the pattern. You don't want to stop the whole song because the pick's gone in a funny direction. Now, I would recommend that you experiment a bit with the picks when you're doing your pick, your strumming practice or picking out different stuff, playing your songs. You want to experiment with using the thin pick and a, a medium pick and then the harder pick. So I use the, the white one, which is the real super thin pick that I use for, that's the easiest one. And again, when I'm doing the left-handed thing, I, that's the one that I want to go to if I'm doing a, a full-on strumming song. I've got this red one which is like a medium ground. It's, it's not as thick as the, the orange one that I tend to use for, for most of my uh, acoustic guitar playing when I'm playing right-handed, right but it's still a little bit more forgiving. And then I use the orange one when I really want a, a, you know, a difficult workout. So I would recommend that you experiment with all three different pick thicknesses to learn about this pick manipulation. 
it doesn't want to become frustrating. If you just jump to using the orange pick, the, the, the thickest of those, and you go to strum your songs, it's, you're going to find that the engagement with the pick is, is stiff and uncomfortable and it feels it keeps getting tangled in and it, you might find it kind of puts you off. And you don't want that, right? You, you need to try and do this incrementally a bit. So have a go at playing with the orange one and see how you get on. What you will find as well with a thicker pick is that you have to hold it lighter. So that's the, the, the challenge is when you're using a thicker pick is that you have to hold it lighter to have control, to have dynamic control and to stop it getting tangled in the strings. But that's hard. That requires a, degrade, a greater degree of ability in pick manipulation. So you want to do this incrementally. Start with the, thin, the thinnest one, move to the slightly thicker one for a bit, see how you get on. Can you manipulate the pick? How's it working for you? Have a go at using the thickest one and go, oh man, I can't do this at all. Or actually, no, this isn't too bad. I'm going to persevere. With the knit such practice, I'm mostly using the orange pick now to try and force myself into learning to manipulate the pick. But I'm finding it a little frustrating, I must admit. So there's it's part of the journey for you now is trying to find that balance between what you can do that's fun, keeping it so you can still play the songs, being able to pick the notes out individually for stuff like which you hear those kind of riffs or playing your scales where you almost certainly want to be using a thicker pick, but still enjoying it and having a good time. So when it comes to all of your practice, particularly the song practice, stay aware of pick manipulation. I don't recommend that you do exercises where you deliberately try and turn the pick around in your fingers while you play, because that's difficult. And I had a go at doing it with the left-handed thing. It was like, no way, no, <laughs> just, just, that wasn't gonna happen. So I don't recommend that you have a go at doing that. I mean, if you're all masochist, you might have a go at doing that, but I don't really think that's probably a wise way to practice. Just be aware of it. Again, a lot of these things that we're doing now, are, uh, here's the thing, here's something that's going to happen. Allow it to happen and, and, and be conscious of it, but don't think about it too much because overthinking it can really spoil the pudding. So, yeah, hope this will help you with some of your pick manipulation queries. That's difficult to say. I keep nearly stumbling over it every time. Anyway, I hope it helps and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Bye-bye.